another edition of the Everlast Power video series. Today we're going to be looking at how to use a Scratch Start TIG Rig Part 2. Previously we've actually used a Power Arc 300 to show you how to set up a Scratch Start TIG Rig. Today we're going to use that same unit and show you how to do a little Scratch Start TIG welding. Now of course because these are DC only units you're not going to be able to weld aluminum. The disadvantage of having a Scratch Start TIG Rig um, is the fact that you actually have no foot pedal control, you have to have a preset amperage. The fact that you have a preset amperage just allows you to concentrate on what you're doing and you use the manipulation of the torch to control your heat and to control your puddle. Another disadvantage of scratch start TIG welding is that sometimes you have tungsten contamination. And this tungsten contamination can cause impurity in your weld. So this is a disadvantage. In a lift start or in high frequency start welding, you're not going to have that kind of contamination risk. One final disadvantage that may actually not be a disadvantage to some people is the fact that you have manual control over the gas valve. Now if you forget to turn the gas valve on when you try to scratch start TIG welding, you're going to burn up your tungsten. And of course if you forget to turn it off and you walk away for a few hours, well, you've lost a lot of argon, and at today's prices, that's not a very cheap thing to do. You know, even with the disadvantages, scratch start TIG welding is not that bad of a deal. So what we're going to do now, we're going to actually take the welder, and we're going to turn it on, and we're going to show you a little bit about scratch start TIG welding. Um, we're going to go over the things that you need to do first to make sure that you're set up to do a scratch start TIG, and then we're going to go into the welding itself. Now if you're welding with a transformer welder or something, you're not going to have these controls here, so you're really not going to need to worry about anything. But if you've got one of our welders or you're working with an inverter welder, you need to make sure that you have your arc force control turned off and your hot start control turned off, because you don't need either of these while you're TIG welding. Now with our other welders, um, like our Power Arc 200, this is built in automatically, but the unit will compensate for the TIG welding while you're using it. One thing that you need to make sure of when you're welding is that your TIG torch is always going to be in the negative and your work clamp is going to be in the positive. Now if you actually have one of our welders and you have the Power Arc 200 or the Power Arc 300, you want to make sure that you're not using the 6010 port. We've just taken a couple pieces of 1 8 inch flat bar and ground the side down so that we have a nice beveled edge. Whenever you're TIG welding, you've got anything that's very thick, you want to bevel the edge so that you get complete joint fusion. Now before we get started, let's talk about the gas flow. Um, you've got your gas valve here, and when you set your argon flow with your flow meter, you want to open this gas valve first and let the gas flow stabilize uh, before you set your gas flow rate. Now I've got ours set about 7 here uh, before we start welding, and I've already preset it. But when you set it, uh, you need to make sure that the gas is not just, uh, just starting to flow because when I open this gas valve, you're going to hear it start escaping very quickly and then it's going to settle down. And that's just because the gas is trying to fill the hose and the hose is swelling and, and contracting a little bit. And all TIG torches do that to some extent. So you can hear the gas flow and now it's calming down and now it's set in at right at 7 uh, liters per minute. Now that would be about 15 cubic feet per hour. Get into the welding aspect of it. Let's just look at how to properly scratch start this unit. Now it's not high frequency. You know, high frequency you would actually hold them, the uh, tungsten up off the metal about an eighth to a quarter inch and the arc would start. Now if you have a lift start, you'd actually press down and flick the uh, tungsten up real quickly and the arc would start. But here, you actually have to scratch the metal, sort of like you would be scratching a match to get the arc to start. Now, it's a little sticky sometimes. It can break your point off, uh, especially if you're at high amperage. You've got a real sharp point. You're going to stick that piece of tungsten in the metal and the end of it's going to probably break off if you're don't have a good uh, prep point. What we've got here is a sharp point. Uh, we're going to weld at a fairly low amperage, so there's no need for us to dull the point a little bit. Um, but, you know, if you're welding at a real high amperage and you've got a very sharp point, you're probably going to leave a little bit of that tungsten in the weld. 
So you need to be careful that you shape your point with just a little bit of truncation on the end if you're going to be doing scratch start TIG welding because soon enough that point is going to become dull. Now you need to be aware that this tungsten is live all the time. If you accidentally touch the tungsten to another piece of metal or something that the uh, work is grounded to that you don't intend to, you're going to get an arc flash. And if you've got your helmet up or something, it's going to be a problem. So be sure that you either put a piece of rubber tubing or something over this uh, cup just long enough to keep the uh, tungsten from touching the metal when you set it down. Manage of scratch start TIG welding is you actually end up dulling the point from time to time, especially if you don't get a real clean scratch start. Um, sometimes the scratch start is more like a touch start, but it's a real quick aggressive motion that you need to break the contact of the tungsten with the metal. And what we're going to do now, we've got kind of down far on our plate, but we're going to stop and regrind this. And if you're a TIG welder, get used to it. Regrinding tungsten is part of your life. Well, we've reground the tungsten and we're going to get started back finishing this little bit of plate here. Um, but we want to show you that you know you do have to stop from time to time if you scratch start TIG welding to regrind your tungsten. It's not a big thing, it takes you less than 30 seconds to do it if you've got a grinder nearby. But just remember that this is one of the things that you come across when you're scratch start TIG welding. Now when you want to finish the weld, you want to actually snap your tungsten up to finish the arc off. Right, now we're finished with the weld and this turned out very well. Very pleased with the Power Arc 300 performance as a TIG welder. Now this is just a scratch start TIG rig and it's just a normal everyday weld that you can make with a rig like this. Um, the weld is very fine. We used the 1 16th inch filler. We didn't have to add a lot because we're doing a root pass here. Uh, but you don't have any undercutting and the, the sides are very well uh, tied in. And you actually have penetration all the way to the back side. And what we ended up welding with was around 45 amps with this unit for this beginning weld. Now we're going to make another pass or two and we'll probably step up the size of the uh, filler rod and we're probably going to increase the amps to about 65 to 70 amps. of having a scratch start TIG rig like this is that it's cheap. 
you know, the cost of the torch is $150 or so, and uh, the gas bottle and a gas regulator, by the time you get out of it, you may be $225. If you've already got the welder, you may be up to five or $600, depending on the type of welder that you use. Um, you can get started very easily with a scratch start TIG rig like this, and you can actually have, like on our Power Art 300, up to 300 amps of, of power. Some people may disagree with me, but I believe having a scratch start TIG rig like this makes you a better welder because you don't have a foot pedal to deal with and that can actually help you learn a little bit quicker. But the thing about not having a foot pedal is that you have to learn to develop your arc at the correct amperage and you have to learn to be patient while you're doing it. You can't just stab the foot pedal down all the way and get a nice hot uh, puddle and, and back off and start welding. You have to be patient and you have to learn to develop the puddle properly. And you also have to learn to set the amperage right to begin with because you don't have the luxury of going back and forth on the pedal until you just see what you want. And if you get too hot with a scratch start TIG like this, you simply start learning how to manipulate the, the, the tungsten and the torch back and forth or in or out of the puddle to control the heat. And that really helps you to become a better technical welder as well. You know, you might be asking, why do we break this thin piece of metal up into two passes? Or well, we could have even made three if we wanted to. Now, the reason is, it's just not good technical skills to weld a thick, heavy, gobby pass in one single pass. Now, if you've got a piece of two-inch thick plate that you're trying to TIG weld, you've got an all-day task there, and you might have an all-week task, depending on what you're welding. Um, but you're not going to weld something all together in a single pass that's really very thick. Um, it's you get a lot better quality weld, a lot more pure welds, if you weld in a thinner pass and lay several passes down. We could have just as easily laid in two beads right here than one. We just did this wide bead right here just to show you the capability of the unit. Well, that concludes today's video. If you have any more questions about TIG welding, scratch start TIG welding, or any of our Everlast products, please feel free to give us a call.